Good morning guys and welcome back to my channel. Today I have a little perfume haul for you. So it's a perfume haul for the month of May. It's sort of a collective haul. So the first part of today's video is in collaboration with Fragrance Buy. If you guys haven't heard of Fragrance Buy, they are a discount perfume retailer. They are one of the most trusted places to get perfumes at a discount. I've been shopping with Fragrance Buy for years. I absolutely love them. They ship to both Canada and the United States. They have great deals. You can find designer, celebrity, and niche perfumes. So don't pay full price for those expensive amazing perfumes definitely check out fragrance buy if you are looking for a great reputable place to buy perfume so with that out of the way you guys let's get started in today's video and if you're new here welcome on this channel we talk a lot about perfume but I also do a little bit of minimalism decluttering home decor things like that I'm also documenting my entire journey on tretinoin here and on my Instagram so if you're interested in skincare as well definitely head on over and follow me on Instagram or subscribe here I'm gonna be sharing with you guys my journey on tretinoin and how that's going the products that i'm using so if any of that stuff interests you i would love if you would consider subscribing and with that out of the way let's get started in the video all right so the first fragrance is jeroboam's insula i had this in a sample and i told you guys before when i was um, trying out this perfume that what it really gave me aside from being a really sweet addictive vanilla fragrance is that it almost has this like hint of bakery essence or bakery accord somewhere in the base. So I really, for some reason, pick up almost the scent of like warm, freshly baked buns, but like maybe like a 2%, like it's a very sweet, um, indulgent, addictive, very, very sweet vanilla. You do have to really like sweet fragrances if you're going to um, enjoy this one. But somewhere deep down in that dry down, there is this little essence of like a bakery accord. And it's really quite addictive. I also don't know if you guys can see, but the juice in here is... Um like a reddish pink color. So you do have to be careful with this one if you're going to be spraying it directly on clothing because uh, it could stain your clothing. So like I said, you have to like sweet fragrances. And this one is one that I find I just keep wanting to come back and smell over and over again. And when I pick it up on the air, it's extremely enjoyable. Um, this one also has amazing performance, you guys. I can spray this on my skin in the evening and go to sleep and I will still smell it on my skin when I wake up in the morning, which says a lot because not very many perfumes last on my skin all night long and into the next day. This would be a really good layering fragrance because it is quite simple. Um, it kind of reminds me a little bit of somewhere, it's like a it's like a way more simple version of Kaoli Vanilla, but not as ambery. It's kind of somewhere along the lines of a Javoy Fire at Will or uh, Indult Tihota. It's along those lines of that kind of a sweet gourmand vanilla. It doesn't smell just like them, but it's similar. It's in that vein. It's a very simple, non-complex, um, addictive, gourmand vanilla fragrance, but it does have this little bit of a floral touch to it as well. It has a little bit of a muskiness to it. And like I say, I do pick up a little bit of this kind of weird bun bakery. I don't know why I just pick up like a croissant or something in the base. So this one is really nice. You have to appreciate a simple fragrance and you have to be okay with very, very uh, sweet fragrances to enjoy it. But honestly, you guys, for the amount that you pay for this and for how long it lasts and how little you really need, I think this is such good value for money. And also the bottle is quite cute and unique. So that is Jeroboam in slow. The next fragrance is my second ever Initio purchase, and this is Psychedelic Love. So you guys, like I've told you before, when it comes to um, Initio fragrances, please do not pay full price because you can get them for so much cheaper on Fragrance Buy. I think this bottle, this bottle, by the way, I bought with my own money. This was not sent to me. Um, I purchased this myself, and I think it came to... I want to say like half price or less than half price of what I would have paid in a Neiman Marcus. So first of all, I want to give you a close up of the bottle. It's a beautiful matte eggplant purple with the gold plaque on the top that says Initio Psychedelic Love. And it has the little gold plaque on the front. And this one, you guys, wow. <laughs> This is a stunning, stunning fragrance. So this is kind of a deep, um, a deep almondy, powdery, vanillic floral fragrance. I believe that the main note in here, the main floral note, I want to say is a lang lang. Sometimes I think it's orchid, but I want to say it's a lang lang. And what this one reminds me of a little bit, just a little bit, is Tom Ford uh, Velvet Orchid. It really reminds me of Velvet Orchid, probably a little because the bottles are both purple and gold. 
but the way it smells as well is a little bit like Velvet Orchid. Um, so it has a lot in common with it, but it doesn't smell just like it. But just for the record, I was debating between this one and Velvet Orchid. Picking between, and I ended up going with Psychedelic Love because this one is just a little bit more everyday wearable. So this has, I believe, myrrh in it. It's a little bit spicy. It's a little bit woody. It's deep. It's powdery. I want to say that there might be almond or heliotrope in here, one or the other, or maybe both. And I believe that there's quite a heavy dose of vanilla in here as well. And I think it's actually a fairly simple composition. I can't think of all the notes off the top of my head at this point in time, um, but this is just, just a really beautiful, elegant fragrance. It's floral enough and light enough that you could wear it during the day um, in like fall winter. This would be a great signature scent, but it's also deep enough, smoky enough, and spicy enough that you could wear it for the evening time, for a night out, for a date. The only time I wouldn't wear this, I think, is the high heat of the summer. If it's really, really hot outside during the day, I think this has a potential to be stiflingly just too much, just a little bit too heavy for the high heat. On a scale of very, very light to very, very heavy, I would say this is probably about a six, if that helps. And then where Velvet Orchid is different, I think Velvet Orchid is just a little bit darker, a little darker, a little smokier. Not that they smell exactly the same, but I think they're somewhere in the same family. And I do think that when I was watching or when I was reading up on reviews of this one, um, a lot of people did make the comparison between this and Velvet Orchid. So just so that you know what you're getting into, but I would say this one goes a little more sweet, a little more vanillic, a little more feminine even than Velvet Orchid is. Just so you guys know, this is not a blind purchase. I ha I actually had a sample. I still have a sample and it is just such an addictive, beautiful fragrance. And I'm not going to lie either. I was watching um, somebody's YouTube video. It wasn't a fragrance reviewer. It was just a, a beauty channel. I don't even, I can't even remember. This was quite a while ago. And I just remember her saying this is one of her favorite perfumes of all time. Like if she could only keep five for life, it would be, this psychedelic love would be in that list. And so that that really influenced me to p sort of put the nail in the coffin, so to speak, in terms of finally making my decision to, that's such a morbid um, <laughs> thing to relate my perfume to. But anyway, that was the straw that broke the camel's back and I finally decided to get this perfume and I don't regret it for a second. It's beautiful, you guys. Um, performance, I wouldn't say it's a monster. It doesn't project like crazy. Uh, it lasts for I didn't time it, but I mean, I think it's moderate longevity at least. I haven't had a ton of time to play around with it, but I would say at least moderate in terms of longevity. So this one, I definitely do recommend. The bottle is also pretty. It looks stunning sitting on a tray. So Psychedelic Love, you guys, 10 out of 10 recommend, and I will have this linked down below for you. The next one is one that was actually sent to me by a subscriber. We did a little bit of a trade. Um, I traded her one of my perfumes for this one and a travel size that she had, and I'll talk about the travel size in a moment. So this is Glossier's U. Now this perfume, if you guys have been watching my channel long enough, you will remember that I used to have this perfume maybe a couple years ago and somehow it left with a declutter that I was doing, which by the way, you guys, I'm going to try to do a lot fewer declutters for a few different reasons. I will talk about that in a future video, but I'm basically kind of getting tired. This is just a little side tension. I'm getting tired of the one in one out or getting a bunch of perfumes and doing a declutter. I'm just getting tired of the cycle. Um, it was fun a couple years ago. It was fun a year ago, but all of a sudden I'm not enjoying that anymore. Like from now on, if I bring in perfumes, I want to really make a decisive decision about what I'm bringing in. And it's not just going to be like constantly accumulating and then constantly decluttering. To me, it's just become old. I know this is random, but it's just become old. I'm kind of tired of it. It's become a little silly to me. It used to be fun when it was like, you know, you could spend $200 and buy like six perfumes and they were all perfumes you had never tried before. But I feel like maybe it's because I've smelled so many perfumes over the last few years. That just doesn't give me a lot of joy anymore. Um, what does bring me joy is really picking a perfume based on, I love it, I think it's incredible, and I think it'll be great for me and I'll wear it. Not like just a constant influx and outflux, you know what I mean? That just does not make any sense to me anymore. I don't know. Um, where was I going with that? So this perfume made it out of my collection with one of those declutters that I did a couple of years ago where it was like, I just needed to purge, I needed to get rid of some, and you know, that type of thing. But this was always a great perfume. I always really enjoyed it. So Glossier U, the bottle is really unique. It's in this pink powdery looking bottle that really perfectly suits the scent that's inside. The only thing I'm not a fan of is that 
red cap. I wish that it wasn't a red cap. I think that it's a little gimmicky looking because the bottle is just so stunning without that red cap. So I don't have all the notes in front of me, but what I do believe is in here is musk and iris, I believe are in here for sure. And what this smells like to me, okay, this is beautiful. This truly is a you but better type of fragrance. And I think that Glossier You, I think that's actually their slogan for this perfume is you but better, I think. This perfume definitely is that. So this is powdery, this is musky. This has a teeny tiny little bit of a lipsticky makeup compact, maybe a hint of a, of a sweetness in there. Just a tiny, tiny hint. But mostly what I get from this is like pencil shavings, wood shavings, musk, powder, and just like a powdery, makeup-y, compact-y kind of scent. It almost reminds me a little bit of like a Molecule 01, a Iso E Super type of thing. And it's just a very delicate, soft, pretty, inoffensive, everyday perfume that you could literally wear as a signature scent. You could wear it to work if you work in a sensitive environment. You could wear it to church. You could wear it to brunch. You could wear it in the evening for Netflix and chill. It's just such a versatile scent. And it literally just makes you smell like yourself, but way better. Like it doesn't even smell like a perfume. It doesn't smell like someone's not going to come up to you and be like, oh, you smell really good. What perfume are you wearing? Or they might, I don't know. But to me, it just smells like you just naturally smell that way. And I know that the subscriber who gifted this to me or who traded uh, me for this said that she couldn't smell it on herself. And I know that a lot of people can't smell this perfume on themselves. I'm one of those lucky people who actually can smell fragrances such as Another 13, uh, Not Another Perfume, um, Molecule 1, Molecule 2, like I can smell those fragrances. So I guess I'm lucky, but I can really smell this on myself, on my clothing, at the bottle. It's very potent to me and I can smell it on my shirt throughout the day. So I find this really enjoyable. Um, it's just a really easy, easy no-brainer perfume. And that's kind of the direction I feel like I'm going with my collection sometimes. So this one, I do recommend if you're looking for a not a perfume perfume, which by the way, I will have a video coming up very soon uh, sharing my top picks for clean girl aesthetic, not really a perfume perfumes um, that are my, my favorite, my favorite ones. So yeah, so that is Glossier U. All right, the next one was also part of that trade with my subscriber and this is Replica Lazy Sunday Morning. I wish I could share the same enthusiasm for this perfume as I do for you by Glossier. This one, you guys, I kind of have a love-hate relationship with. So this one, this one smells to me very similar to Bubble Bath from Replica. I feel like this one and Bubble Bath are sisters. I can't quite remember exactly what Bubble Bath smells like, but to compare them in my memory, I feel like Bubble Bath goes a touch more in the uh, coconut vanilla direction, whereas this one is a little bit more in the musk laundry detergent direction. So this one to me doesn't really make me think of lazy Sunday morning. It doesn't make me think of a chill, relaxing day at home, lying in bed or on the couch or whatever. It doesn't make me think of that. Plus, I can't think of a Sunday in my life where I pretty much didn't do anything. <laughs> I feel like I always have something to do on a Sunday. Anyway, um, but this one actually smells to me very soapy. It smells very soapy, like an actual bar soap or almost like a laundry detergent kind of vibe. It's almost like you had a shower and you used a really a really soapy like dove soap, something that has that traditional soap smell and you didn't wash it all off or your skin retained some of that scent. That's what this smells like to me. It's kind of musky, but it's very, it's very soapy and very strong and it has a potential to cause a headache, at least for me. That's one thing I've noticed over the last few years is that I have a tendency to get headaches from perfumes more easily these days than I ever, ever have before. I don't know why that is, but this is one of those perfumes that for me definitely can spark a bit of a headache. It's just very, it's very strong and it's very, very soapy. And to be honest, you guys, I don't know that I want to smell like this. Um, it was one I was kind of toying with. I had smelled it back and forth in the store and I was thinking this might be a great literally lazy day kind of perfume where you're not really doing much or something you could wear to work that would just make you smell clean and fresh. And it is clean and fresh, but without being citrusy or floral, it's kind of like fresh clothing, fresh soap vibes. So yeah, if you guys um, have lazy Sunday morning or you've smelled it, let me know what you think about it. But this is not one of my favorite replica perfumes, I have to say. I just really don't love the way that it smells. Like to me, it just smells like soap and I, I don't want to smell like soap. 
So let me know what you guys think about that. That is lazy Sunday morning. All right, and the next fragrance, you guys, and this is one of my favorite in today's video. This one and Psychedelic Love are probably my top two from today's video. This is the newest release from Diptyque, and this is Le Papier. So Le Papier, you guys, is actually one that I was not wowed by when I first smelled this in the store. My boyfriend and I um, were shopping around, we were at a Nordstrom's and he actually smelled it first and told me he really liked it. And I actually didn't think it was that special and I kind of brought him over to a different counter and but he knew that this was what he wanted. And that's one thing about him is he has very good taste in perfumes. So this one was kind of, um, really not that special to me. I could hardly smell it actually at the time in the store. And it wasn't until actually after he purchased it and wore it for the duration of our trip and I kept smelling it on him when he was getting in and out of the car and when he would walk past me or I would go up to him or sit down beside him on the couch and I would smell this, um, that was when I realized how incredible this fragrance is. So this fragrance, you guys, first of all, the bottle is absolutely stunning. Um, it's got the traditional diptyque style bottle with the label. That's what the inside looks like. Just a really, really beautiful bottle. And this one, this is one of the most beautiful, addictive, and understated fragrances. Again, this is one of those you but better, not quite a perfume perfumes that if you wear it, you will smell incredible and nobody will be able to quite figure out what that is. It, it literally does not smell like a perfume. I think the notes that are in here are two different types of musk, uh, mimosa, woody notes, and sesame seed is what I wanna say is in here. And this one again, gives me a little bit of that pencil shaving vibes. It's kind of similar to Glossier U, but this one is more unisex and Glossier U is more feminine if you're asking me. So I think what makes this one special is that they've combined mimosa and sesame seed in here as well. It gives what would otherwise be a fairly basic, not that exciting, musky woody fragrance it gives it a bit of a twist and it makes it smell just incredible it smells clean it smells like laundry fresh but not like laundry detergent but like you are just so clean and you just smell naturally incredible like that is just how you smell that's your scent it does not smell like a fragrance at all it also reminds me a little bit of like molecule 01 again gives me an isoe super type of vibe it gives me those pencil shaving type of vibes a lot of people that i've spoken to about this said that they also smell pencil shavings which i know that if you're new to perfume you're thinking why would i want to smell like pencil shaving but trust me if you've ever smelled molecule 01 or if you if you know this kind of scent profile and you like it you know what i mean so it really, oh, it is so special. It's so good. And it, like I said, it wasn't until I experienced it on him that I realized I wanted it for myself. It is that perfect, clean girl aesthetic, no nonsense, you but better, not quite a perfume perfume. It's just amazing. They've done such a good job with it. And this is an eau de toilette concentration, you guys, but don't let that deter you from wanting to try it because it actually lasts a decent amount of time in clothing. On skin, I can't quite recall, but on clothing, I will smell this on my shirt like the next day after I pick it up from wherever, I will still be able to smell this, uh, this fragrance on the clothing item. So it definitely does last. And I can say that it projects and it's a compliment getter because I could smell it on my boyfriend the whole, every single time he wears this. And I always compliment him and tell him how amazing he smells. And so, yeah, it's just an incredible, uh, very elegant, very well done um, the fragrance that doesn't really smell like a perfume and you really have to try it. Um, yeah, so that is Diptyque Le Papier. And by the way, this one, actually four, four of the perfumes in this video were technically purchased myself. Like I said, two of the perfumes were trades and the rest of them I purchased with my own money. The only one that was gifted to me was uh, Jeroboam Insulo, which I had a sample and was already kind of planning to get anyway. So just as like a little disclaimer, spent my own money on this gem and it was worth every penny. So that is Le Papier from Diptyque. So that's it for today's video, you guys. Thank you so much for watching. I hope that you enjoyed hearing my thoughts on these perfumes and I hope to see you all very soon in my next video.